for a company that was set up to make people think, to do a series of lectures is like a bit of a dream for me. The do lectures for me are a gathering of speakers and people who can make change happen to really focus on action that's positive, that's not militant, that's not over radical, but trying to make the extraordinary stuff that we can do normal. It's a perfect opportunity to get all these people that really want to do something but are struggling um, to, into one place so they can then sort of have the confidence and the information to, to go out there. People can come to things like this, they can be fired up, be enthused by things. It takes them out of their normal day-to-day -day life. It allows people to see things differently. And I'm sure, I'm very optimistic that this, but how it's doing here, uh, really leads to activities that people make a change. In order to get lots of people to do something, you have to form alliances of tiny groups of people. There's a sort of chemistry that occurs when you get a, a group of people together in a, in a nice place, doing a lot of things together and um, listening to each other, talking about what they believe in and what they've done with their lives as well. You need to be able to come together and be nourished, be sustained, be fired up again. One person can be massively inspired to do something, but without peer support and without fellow like-minded people, it's really easy to get burnout. I think Howie is taking a very hands-on approach to their earth tax responsibilities by rather than just making a donation, putting the effort into taking things one step further and creating a forum for people to come and disseminate these issues. The earth tax is a 1% voluntary contribution that any business can make towards dedicating 1% of the total revenues to environmental causes. To use that earth tax not simply for doing something physical, but to use it for doing something that has to do with ideas. It's quite an interesting twist on an earth tax. It was almost like they were sponsoring each individual to come to do lectures and see what they can do from it. I think a lot more uh, companies that, that, that profit from people going out into the outdoors and using their equipment and their, and, and their clothing in the outdoors should put something back. You know, we're talking about the environment and nature and you know, looking after all this wonderful planet. It kind of strikes home when you're in this place that you think, God, we need to protect it. Being somewhere where you've got like the same mud on the shoes and they're all sleeping in the same tents, which the rain's battering down outside, I think you feel, yeah, you, you, everyone does come together really. You do feel like you've got a much more primitive experience. There's an energy in it and there's something positive that comes from it. It feels very kind of appropriate place for a place for ideas to grow. You go to the talks, you come out, you can talk to the people who gave the talks, you can talk to each other, you can talk about it over lunch, you can talk about it in the evening. Simple, simple food that kind of makes you good as soon as you eat it. And I call a lot of people cold and you kind of eat supper, and the first bite of fresh local food just kind of makes you feel better. There's a huge variety of people, and that's a real testament to the approach that Howie's have had in selecting people for this event. Seeing people who have gone out and done things because they believe in it is inspiring. I think Tim, you know, who he was just talking about, like, this, this amazing kind of can-do attitude. Yes, I can do absolutely anything if I put my mind to it. One of the speakers that really struck me was the guy that had Forager as his job description. I just think that's the most brilliant job description ever. I've never even thought about surfing. And when I watched that film about that guy surfing, I just thought, that is incredible. I was nearly in tears. Alison McIntosh, for sure, for me, uh, was absolutely brilliant in terms of um, just showing how it's not just about action on the outside, it's about um, your inner being and, and how that informs your actions. And you know, Andy was the climber guy, was talking about not being frightened to fail. And I suppose it just gives you more, more confidence there, don't, you know, don't be frightened of failing. Um, so it's a bit hard over the bar and really go for it. I didn't know what I was going to find here, and I've been delighted to find a lot of very grounded activist people, and I think that when those type of people are brought together, that's a very valuable thing. Yes, we've got some speakers who are 
privileged enough to be invited to do the speaking, but the truth is the, the delegates are also very much part of this whole thing. I think we all share the same values and this, the same ambitions, but people are coming at it from very, very different angles and with different agendas, and that is what has made it the energy that it, that it has been. We've certainly found people with which we'll be keeping in touch, possibly even starting projects together. I've had five or ten conversations so far which are really interesting. Some of them are, oh actually we should talk further about this and making connection and others are sort of digesting what we've been hearing. Yeah, and I think that's sort of the main thing. It's almost like the centre stage is the sort of background thing that's stimulating those conversations. Seeing everybody coming out from the teepee and standing round and talking and really getting into what the whole event is about is fantastic. It's not really what people do in the tent or who they listen to in the tent. It's like who they talk to outside the tent. The people are talking and they're making all these connections and being inspired by each other and how they can work together in little pockets of the groups of people to then go off and do something. Many people here have been up at seven in the morning, 18 hours a day, they've been thinking, talking, and being in the space of gently processing what's going on. So for me, the, the, long, you know, the long enough lunches and gaps between lectures, coffee times and so on, as well as the workshop space, are critical in terms of just giving people a chance to process what's there, really, really invaluable. The last workshop, the Eco Storm documentary one, really showed the kind of cutting edge, people putting themselves at risk and the, the drama of some of the issues. I've already gone with the, either the lighter or the matches and some newspaper or whatever and just collected the wood and done it like that. This is, it was just amazing, it was just so cool. It's great to have people thinking and to have people coming together and, and talking together, but that practical, push is really really important and I think it, it's been wonderful for people to be able to practice all of the skills that they've heard or all of the theories and see actually how, how they look and what they might mean in practice. Just putting flour, water, yeast and salt together and coming out with a loaf of bread is a wonderful life affirming experience in a very obvious way because you can eat the result and it makes you, it keeps you going, it makes you healthy and so on. And, you know, for me, that's what this sort of gathering is all about. The diversity of the people here, combined with the diversity of the talks, I think will do a fantastic amount for being able to get it, get it out into, into those sort of communities and, and spread it further. Just from the connections and conversations I've been having, I get the feeling a lot of very positive ripples will go out from it. These kind of groups, things, when you do talks in a kind of confined group of people, each of those persons then becomes a, a sort of ambassador and they go back off to where they've come from and they tell other people and it does spread in much more of a way than you might think. 75 people here tell 10 people and those 10 people tell another 5 or 10 people and we should be able to get to say 5,000 very easily by you know, five days time. I hope that people go away from this thinking about all the fantastic things they've learned, the people they've met, We'll keep those relationships, I hope, for a long time. This needs to be going on like every week or something and have like different people coming to it. It's not that difficult to do it. Next year we have a plan to keep the do lectures carrying on and uh, just make it you know, quite a focal thing. You know, we've got to go and find the money to, you know, to do these series of lectures. I think they're quite important. It helps people to think differently and not only to think differently, but really doing things differently.